I'm Mr. B and today we're going to be talking about camshaft codes in this 2015 Volkswagen Jetta. So the code that we're getting today is a P0011, it's a camshaft over advanced code. So in other words, the camshaft, the intake camshaft, which on this vehicle is the only one that can be adjusted, is too far forward or too far advanced in the four stroke cycle. So there's a couple of things that can cause this, but right now, I'm just now getting into this car. I actually don't know what's wrong with the car yet, but I figured y'all would follow me along as I do a diagnostic of this vehicle. So the first thing I did was check the scan tool and check to see if the camshaft was lining up with the correct allocation. In other words, where it was supposed to be. And there is a, uh, a PID in there in the, can in the scan tool that will tell you if the camshaft is doing what it's supposed to and this was a little off so a lot of times if you have a vehicle that has poor maintenance um, you know lack of oil changes wrong type of oil in it uh, this can also cause some camshaft issues but on this one i don't know the history of it it's a 2015 it's only got 75,000 miles on it so that's not really a whole lot of miles it also is accompanied with some uh, transmission codes as well so we do maybe have a transmission issue and also the car was involved in a rear-end accident where it was rear-ended so those are good things to keep when we're looking into a car with a vehicle you want to keep that stuff in mind if the car was hit how old the car is maintenance where the car is maintained the car may have the wrong type of oil in it you know so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you the timing system kind of how it works and the serviceable parts on it. So stick for that. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be looking at. I'm gonna zoom out so you can kind of understand where we're at. This is going to be the passenger side of the engine. And I'm gonna zoom back in and I'm gonna show you what we're looking at here. This is the variable valve timing. Sometimes they call it a solenoid, sometimes they call it a magnet, okay? On this vehicle, it's held in with these three uh, Torx, let's see if I can zoom in there, Torx, they're T30s. So, uh, you know, pretty, pretty much everybody has one of those. So to unplug it, you're just going to press that little button there and unplug it. It's a two pin plug. And then take the bolts out and then this will pop out. You may need to use a screwdriver to kind of get in between there and this is one of the parts that can go faulty and cause some issues. We're gonna discuss this here in a second, but I wanted to show you what's beyond this. See if I can, right there in the dead middle to the left of that dipstick, right here, you will see there is a dark colored disc, all you can see of it right now. Uh, let's see, there you go. And it'll have two holes in it. And those two holes are gonna correspond with a special tool from Volkswagen. But I've heard of people getting it out with a, um, a tool kit for the rear calipers. So it's just two pins, maybe even a spanner wrench. But the important thing to remember about this is it threads in backwards, okay? So righty, loosey, lefty, tidy, okay? So I'm going to turn this to the right. I've got this already loosened. It's going to be a little bit difficult to loosen, but, and when we pull this out, just pull it straight out, you're going to see the other half of this VVT system. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. There we go. Okay, so you'll see all these holes and passageways, and this is where oil will go through to advance or retard the intake camshaft. So a lot of times these will get clogged up. The screens right here will get clogged with debris, oil, uh, particles, uh, all kinds of stuff, soot. And you'll have to take this out and I take some brake cleaner and I spray it out, make sure that this can move. This little point right here is spring loaded. This moves in and out and this is actually, it almost acts as a valve body for the VVT system or the variable valve timing system. So 
Uh, you may want to replace this. They're fairly cheap now. You can get these for 20, 25 bucks. And if you're continuing to have problems, before we go and do timing chains and stuff like that, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace these parts. So when we go to put these back in, remember that turning to the left is actually tightening. And so let's talk about this magnet right here. This is what we call the uh, VVT magnet. So there's this is an electromagnet, and the electrical part of this will either magnetize or demagnetize this, and this pin will move in and out. I have seen these where the pin is stuck. Okay. Normally, if the pin's stuck, I'm going to, if I know this is the the problem, I'm going to go ahead and replace this with a OEM equivalent piece or a Volkswagen piece. You can clean these if they stick. If you can get them unstuck. You know, I still would recommend just replacing them. But if you're just trying to diagnose that this is the problem, yeah, maybe go ahead and clean it out, put everything back together, and see if your code goes away and see if your camshaft's lined back up again. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean this out real quick. I'm gonna put it back together, grab the scan tool, and I'm gonna see if the camshafts are going to line back up like they're supposed to. Okay, just went and took a test drive with our Jetta. It is so much better. Uh, earlier, we were dealing with some uh, idle quality issues, more or less. The car was uh, kind of galloping at idle, uh, looking like it was maybe searching for the correct idle. So we're back now. I'm going to go into the engine management. And while this is doing this, y'all, just go ahead and give me a like on this video if you're learning anything or you think this is helping you out at all. And of course, subscribe to the video. Do codes only. Okay, so the only code I have is for the light to be on, uh, the check engine light to be on, and that's because I have a transmission issue with this car as well. But we're not seeing that P0011 again. So, um, that's a good sign. I went ahead and checked the PID data as well while I was test driving. The camshaft is acting like it's supposed to. So probably what happened with this vehicle is either something got into that magnet or that uh, solenoid valving that I took out and it kind of hung it up. There's not a whole lot of pressure in there that, that, that would cause a hang up as far as, you know, you can get a small piece of anything in there and it'd hang it up. So I went ahead and did that. I'm going to go ahead and recommend a customer getting a uh, engine flush and oil change on this vehicle as well just to make sure there's no sediment or anything in the system so uh, pretty cheap fix um, you know if, if this happens again after you do this repair I would go ahead and replace that magnet and the valve that goes uh, the, the solenoid valve that goes into the camshaft uh, those are, are fairly cheap now they've gotten a lot cheaper and may end up saving you a lot of headache Okay, so that's it for today for our P0011 quick fix. Now, uh, if you do this fix and you're still having an issue or you have other codes outside of the P0011, you may have other problems. And these uh, systems do give a lot of problems uh, with later ownership. So, you know, above 100,000 miles and stuff like that, we start seeing timing chains go bad guides go bad tensioners go bad things like that so but this is if you can catch it quick enough and repair it this way it, it definitely going to save you a lot of time and money so uh, if you have this code try this first if it doesn't work you're out maybe you know 45 minutes to an hour and then yeah you can tear the front of the engine off and go ahead and put chains on and guides on and all that jazz so um, thank you for tuning in